Well, it's time now for Perspective. Seven months after its departure from Earth, NASA's latest Mars rover, Perseverance, is gearing up for an audacious landing attempt on the Red Planet. NASA engineers say the touchdown should take place at around 10pm French time this Thursday, with hopes the rover can send a first surface image of Mars shortly after. My guest today is former NASA astronaut Garrett Reisman, who's also been the director of space operations at SpaceX. Thank you very much for speaking to us today on France 24. Now, up until, until now, a significant proportion of missions to the surface of Mars have failed to land successfully. How confident are you that perseverance will prevail today? I'm very hopeful, but I don't know if I would say confident. <laughs> it, 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 historically, it has been very difficult to land on the surface of Mars. And it's because it's difficult to navigate out there. You're so far away from Earth. There's no GPS. Uh, you have to find Mars all by yourself out there. So it's, it's a tricky thing to do. And then getting through that Martian atmosphere, which is thick enough to, to make it difficult, but, but not thick enough to really help you slow down. That really, the physics of landing on Mars are quite complicated. And what is it that this mission hopes to achieve in the long term? How long does it plan to be on Mars if indeed uh, the, the landing works successfully? Uh, and what, uh, what information are we trying to get from this, uh, this latest attempt to, uh, to discover Mars? Well, the, the best case scenario is an answer to the question we've been trying to answer for a long time now, which is, has there ever been life on Mars? which would be a profound answer if we get that in, in the affirmative, right? So we've been getting tantalizingly close. We keep finding signs that suggest the conditions were favorable for the formation of life as we know it, but we haven't found that dis the definitive piece of evidence. There is a chance, not a, no means a certainty, but there's a chance that Perseverance could find that evidence. And this rover is planning to collect samples from Mars and then bring those samples back to Earth. How do you go about bringing physical matter from Mars back to Earth? How does, how does that even work? Yeah, it's not easy. You need a rocket. So, so uh, Perseverance doesn't have the capability to bring those samples back home. So Perseverance is going to collect those samples, put them and seal them in, in metallic tubes and leave them on the surface of Mars. A future mission will come along and scoop those samples up, put them into a rocket, which will blast off from the surface of Mars and return all the way back to Earth with these, with these small samples. So it's going to be a multi-stage process because it's difficult to get all those things that you need to collect the samples, uh, store the samples, and then ship the samples back in one mission. Now, we already do know a fair bit about the composition of Mars, thanks uh, in large part to Perseverance's predecessor, Curiosity. What did Curiosity find out? Well, Curiosity you know, w w gave us a lot of really good scientific return. We found out a lot more about the chemistry, the geology of Mars, and the fact that uh, the existence of, 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 of surface water uh, at one point in, in Mars's history. So we learned a lot. But again, we didn't uh, we, we, we were able to determine the that there are some precursor conditions, but but it didn't have the instrumentation to really show telltale signs of life. And that's the big difference between uh, curiosity and perseverance. Also, perseverance has a helicopter and it has uh, a device that's capable of con of making oxygen from the Martian atmosphere. So uh, it, it's quite a big step up, even though it looks the same. The capabilities are, are vastly different. And I'd like to just pick up on that uh, that uh, machine you referenced just then. I think it's called MOXIE, the Mars Oxygen In-Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, if I've got that right. What exactly does that do and why is it so <laughs> exciting? So, so uh, it's going to prove, we, we've known about these chemical reactions. Uh, in, in fact, Sabatier figured this out a long time ago. And, and what it is, uh, it's an ability to take the carbon dioxide, which is the predominant constituent in the Martian atmosphere, and break that down into oxygen and carbon monoxide. And, and, and this, is, this will be a single stage process just to produce oxygen. In the future, we could do a proper Sabatier process by which we can take the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, the water, which should be in ice in the, in the, below the surface of Mars, right below the, 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 right under the dirt, basically. 
And by combining the water and, and the carbon dioxide, we can make not only oxygen, but also methane, which is a very useful propellant that we can use in rocket engines to come back home to Earth. So uh, this is the first step in just proving that it can be done. Now, uh, the U.S. has sent, I think I'm right in saying, uh, nine spacecraft to Mars successfully. Um, but China is hot on uh, America's heels. Uh, the Chinese rover is due to arrive uh, on Mars in May. The in uh, sorry, India and the UAE uh, both have missions uh, to orbit Mars. How do you see this, this new frontier in the international space race? Is it a positive thing, do you think? I, th I think it's a very positive thing, absolutely. I, I think the more nations that are, are co collaborating and working together to further understand uh, the, the science behind what's happening on Mars and to also learn more so that we can eventually send humans there, I see it not as a competition. I, I see it as collaboration. Of course, uh, each nation probably wants to make the discovery themselves. And, and, and competition is good as long as it's a friendly competition and spurring on scientific discovery. I'm all for it. And is there a lot of active collaboration between different countries when it comes to, to missions to Mars? Well, so, some more than others, and, and that's because of geopolitical reasons. Uh, you know, there, there, especially in recent years, there's been tensions between the United States and China, and that's spilled over into our, into our ability to collaborate officially uh, as, as NASA and the Chinese Space Agency are not working actively together, for example. But the scientific community is international. And as, as science, uh, scientists publish papers, that's in the public domain and we all will, will learn. So I think the research that comes out of these, these different missions will be shared largely internationally and will benefit everybody, to, at least to a certain extent. I wish we could collaborate more and I wish it could be, it could be completely open and transparent, but there's the reality that we live in. Now, you did work for a number of years at SpaceX, most recently as Director of Space Operations, a rather cool-sounding job, it must be said. Now, Elon Musk has said he wants us to become a multi-planet species. He wants humans on Mars within the next few years. Would you volunteer for the trip? <laughs> uh well, I'm in a little different position now than when I flew on the space shuttle and went to the International Space Station. Now I have a family. And I made a promise to the family that if it's, if, it's, if it's going to Mars, if it's going that far and for that long, that the only way I'll do it is if we can do it as a family. So if my kids could come and my wife could come, then uh, I think we have a deal. Sounds like a good family day out. Uh, NASA astronaut, former NASA astronaut uh, Garrett Reisman, uh, also former uh, director of the Space Operations Branch at SpaceX. Thank you very much for speaking to us here on France 24 today.